Hello everybody, welcome in, my name's Kagan. Today we're gonna to be watching a video of Marine Corps officers at the basic school in Quantico. Not too long ago, about two weeks, uh, Business Insider went out there, I mean, it was probably long, longer than that, right? But they went out there and they filmed uh, a the basic school class going through the whole six months process and they condensed the whole six months or seven months into 36 minutes, I think, or something like that. So I am kind of curious to see how they did this. And I'm sure that many of you are as well. And for those of you that have been through the basic course or the basic school or basic officer course, as some people refer to it, um, you'd probably be interested to see what they kind of came up with. So let's check this out. And I might pause it a couple times on the way through and like explain certain things if it's like a little convoluted and hard to understand. Because I'm just kind of curious how this turned out. So let's check it out, shall we? There. Marine Corps officers are training in a simulated combat scenario. Yeah. It's the culminating event of the basic school. Succeed? No. Succeed? That right there is not necessarily the culminating event. They're doing war as the Marine Corps as the culminating event. grows in the Indo-Pacific theater where tension with China builds. Yeah, so that area that they were at was actually called Mount which is like military op military operations in urban terrain. And unless they've changed something or they might be doing something different. I mean, for all I know, they're doing war out there. Like the final exercise is called war. And you like, you know, I forget if it's like four or five days. I can't remember exactly. But you do do some stuff in urban terrain. But that area specifically was where we did mount training, like the military operations in urban terrain training package that they have there it's like a full training package with all kinds of stuff like you got blanks you got simunition rounds you've got like flashbangs you've got all kinds of stuff and the instructors were really like busting their butts at that at that part to uh do paints like painting targets uh because they wanted to make it as realistic as possible. So anyway, we'll keep going. Middle East, where U.S. and allied forces battle Houthi rebels, the stakes for these Houthi. new officers couldn't be higher. They're charged with making decisions that could make the difference between life and death. But at the basic school, these future leaders step into the shoes. Oh, of the there it is. They will be commanding fighting holes their roles in real effects three. Combat exercises. Or at least that's what it was it's for us. It's critical to understand what you're asking your Marines to do from a standpoint that you actually know what you're doing, what you what you're trying to ask to be accomplished. We whole bunch of lieutenants days inside the basic school, observing five different companies at various stages of training, all working toward the same goal, becoming leaders of Marines. Training happens here at Marine Corps Base Quantico, Quantico. in Virginia, mm -hmm. about 40 miles from Washington, a more than 55,000 acre installation where Marines have. I think that was. Sorry, we're having like a typhoon here right now. It's like insane outside. Trained for over a century. They call it the core of the core. Here, every new Marine officer receives 1,100 hours of classroom and field instruction. God, it's been around for so long. Program. The official name of this Marine Corps institution they had is tanks? the basic school. The basic school. Today, about 1,700 officers graduate from the school every oh, year. I recognize some of these people. The, fleet. the basic school is the entry. I think, hold on, who's this? Level training program for Capri, Captain Zach McCormick. Or whether they come from the commissioning source of officer candidate school. I recognize the Academy, him. ROTC, or even the warrant officers in the Marine Corps all come through the basic school. Yeah. But the oh, yeah, they have all, like, just to kind of caveat, so you see the Ireland thing. We go through the basic school with folks from across, you know, all the NATO forces, like we have various different people. Like when we went through, we had a guy from Mexico. We had a guy from, um, I mean, some people aren't NATO, but like, you know, we have people from all the, all sorts of partner nations we work with. We had a, a guy from Mexico. We had a guy from, uh, Germany. We had a guy from the Philippines, I believe is the Philippines or Thailand or Indonesia. One of the three it might be Indonesia. I think, but yeah, 
people from all over. Um, I know some guys that went through with, uh, you know, some of the Brits. You know, they said that it was a good time with them. Um, cool guys. The basic school doesn't just train U.S. Marine officers. It also hosts members of foreign military partners. Yeah. Having international officers here is so critical to be perfectly clear. We may find ourselves serving with them. Oh, that's the new colonel. I'm okay. from the Bahamas. I represent the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. The Royal Bahamas. That's cool. Um, I feel it's a great opportunity, especially for internationals. Um, it builds that's awesome. international relations and... You also get to meet new people. He's spot on building relationships and meeting new people. That's one of the biggest things. That's one of the biggest reasons I would ever encourage people to join the military in general is get exposure to something different. Try something different for a change. And if you don't like it, you can always get out. You know, Def what a what an awesome point this guy has. How do you like this weather? Ah, uh, the weather is it takes some getting used to. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I'm fully clothed. It gets freezing cold there in the winter time. I'll tell you right now. When we had, we literally got an entire field op canceled because we had a massive snowstorm that shut down the entire interstate because there was like semi tractor trailers that like completely blocked off the entire highway, and we didn't go to the field because there was tons of trees that were falling down because everything froze and there was like four. I don't know if it was like four. It was like a foot and a half, maybe more of snow. It was insane. So it gets very cold up there in the wintertime. On a frigid day in December, Davis and his fellow members of Bravo Company pick up the clothing and equipment they'll need for training. Right, and you go to the uniform or you go to the uh, initial issue facility or the consolidated issue facility. That guy was there. Please. That guy was there when I was there. This is the thing you classically run into because civilians, they don't rotate in and out every four years like, you know, the military members do. So, like, oftentimes the same dude or dudette that was at a position when you went through school could potentially still be there in, like, 10, 15, 20 years. There's a good chance there's majors out there somewhere in the Fleet Marine Force that there were civilians there that were there when they went through as a lieutenant. Hey, sir. Hey, come on, let's go. Anything breaks, don't throw nothing away. Then you have to pay for it. Are right, you going to sign and take your IMR, please? Then you have to pay for it. You make enough money anyway. I just want to say thank you all. I appreciate each and every one of you for what you do, okay? All right, all right. Yeah, then you got to lay everything out. Your parka, your Apex parka, a.k.a. your Gore-Tex. <laughs> so, Next so up, funny. we got our waffle tops and bottoms. I should have one of each. One top, one bottom. Basically, they're just doing a junk on the bunk, but they're doing it outside. Because you're just like, you get all this, you get a ton of stuff issued. So first off, most of the time, when they went, when any officer went through, like, uh, like what is it called? Officer candidate school. Just for example, you get way less stuff there than you get here. You get a lot more gear here because you need it, right? So they have to go through and you count, make sure that everybody got the right size of every piece of gear that you're supposed to get and all the clothing and all that stuff. All right, next is gonna be your camp stool. Hold out your camp stool. I think getting right back into it's gonna be a good thing for all of us. Um, Tyler Prendergast. Most of us were coming off OCS, not with injuries, but most of us were pretty broken, like pretty tired. So it was good to have that. Yeah, so that's another thing. When you, a lot, most of the time when folks graduate college or they go to officer candidate school, they go straight to TBS immediately after, no break. So they don't get to rest up from officer candidate school like some of us do, like that, like I got to. Um, and a lot of times you have a lot of injuries because you can't drop. You can't tell anyone you got hurt because you'll get dropped, right? Um, it's very competitive. And you run tons, tons, you're running so much there. And like, you know, full camis, boots and utes, you know, with some gear on occasionally, depending on what you're doing. Uh, I, because I did uh, an Edo program, I got to go back to college and finish college after I did officer candidate school. So I didn't have to go to TBS until I graduated college. So I had two years to like really recover and let myself heal up from that experience. So He's spot on when he says that. That week off with Thanksgiving, but it's good to keep that momentum going. I didn't want to sit in an office for six months and then come back 
and then lose all that momentum that we've built. So I'm not looking forward to the cold, but I mean, I, I was not either surrounded by everybody just getting through the suck together, I think is going to be what essentially builds our camaraderie and yeah. going to help us get through it. So yeah, that's for sure. What about the Marine Corps? You got to come together when you're with your My platoon out in the cold, Marine, man. That's the only uh, way to get through really that thing. To me growing up, I had never really considered another Callan Padron. And so you look around and you see Marines and the camaraderie is much more impressive than I've seen anywhere else. Is your grandfather still with us? No. He's not? No. Did you ever talk to him about how you wanted to pursue this? No, I didn't, uh, but it was always in the back of my mind, so I just had to go for it. And here he, he, he made the right choice. Absolutely. Next up's going to be your gold sleeping bag. How are you feeling about that? Your gold? It's Coyote Brown. Coyote um, Brown, it's, you weirdo. It's nothing I haven't done before, so I'm ready for it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be cold. Yes, That's it about is. the only difference. It's going to get real cold, man. I'll give you an example. When one of the hikes we did was seven degrees, seven degrees, we got all the way at, we hiked, I think it was like we hiked five to, I think we hiked seven miles. It might've been seven miles. It's like five to seven miles. It was at night, hiked out to the crew serve range and it was seven degrees when we got there covered in sweat. And we had some people like you know, have to sleep bunched up together because they were going to become hypothermia cases if they didn't. And like you're my buddy took off his 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 uh, blouse and within a minute it was frozen solid. So it gets cold up there. The next morning in below freezing temperatures, Bravo Company arrives for its initial physical fitness test, which is made up of three parts. First, pull-ups. Well, it's a, it's a brawny-looking gentleman a there. Event. The intent is to execute a vertical dead hang pull-up. The intent is to avoid a pendulum-like motion that enhances the ability. To the intent is to not cheat the at all, perform as ever pull -ups on anything. Can. The minimum standard varies by height, weight, and gender. So for me personally, I have to do 23 pull -ups to get a max and -ups every time. Are essential to building the upper body strength necessary to win battles. Yeah, pull-ups, you're good to go. Don't ever skip back day. You should always do back day. Well, I was a little bit better recovered after OCS, so I got some more rest in, and it went better than I was even hoping. So. How's the weather? Good, actually. I'm from the north, so it's not too far off. Oh, okay. Adapted to it already. I'm sure the guy from the Bahamas is having a very fun time in this. I have a small frame, so it wasn't too bad. Hi. The nice. Bar was a bit cold Crushing though, so it. It was a bit more difficult, but it went pretty well. 16? I got 20. Feel good about that? Absolutely. Um, the sergeant told me I went a little too like high on the pull-ups, like going chest high instead of just the chin. So probably could have hit 23, but you know, gotta get good form over the number. Probably could have hit 23, but. So just for a tip for anyone that's interested. I do that. I do the same thing. I always like, I'm like pulling up so hard that I'm like almost hitting chest to bar. And then I'm like dropping and locking out. The reason a lot of people do that is because they're so nervous that it's going to not count that they almost overdo it. Um, the key is to not use as much energy, slowly lowering yourself down because you get more tired fast. But as long as you're not kipping or swinging your body, you're usually going to be fine. But, you know, got to get good form over the number. How are you liking this weather? Love it. <laughs> Love it. The plank should be conducted as follows. Elbows should be bent and lowered to the ground so that the forearms are lying flat on the ground with the body in a straight line similar to a push-up position. Next, the Marines must perform a two-minute plank. Elbows should be aligned below the shoulders with forearms parallel to the body. It's, all, it's usually pretty mental after the first minute, so you just kind of push through the rest, just get that max. How are you feeling about the run? Um, good. I, I know it's going to go well. I mean, that's the worst PFT route I've ever ran in my whole career. And I've ran the PFT in Hawaii, I've ran the PFT in mainland Japan, I've ran the PFT in Quantico, in multiple locations in Quantico. 
Um, I've ran the PFT in Camp Lejeune. I've ran the PFT in Paris Island. And that is the worst PFT route I've ever ran by far. Just going to be upfront with you about it. Like it's straight hills. Like it's, it's terrible. Um, but that doesn't matter. Like tough, you know, tough crap. You just gotta, you gotta push it out and just do, you know, just work hard, you know, work hard, run hard. And, you know, when you are on the way back, you're good. You get some downhills too. Like it's not all uphill. Cause it's kind of like, it's like a snake, right. You know? Um, but yeah, it's brutal. You know, once you go uphill, it's downhill. So just kind of take that in stride. This is going to be your three mile run portion of your PFT. This is a timed event. Finally, a three mile run. Finally, the three mile run. <laughs> Men have 28 minutes to complete the run. Women have 31 minutes. Padrone, yeah, most people. And Davis, I'm telling you right now, most people. The run in time. Most people in fact, in, at uh, member of Bravo at TBS are not going to even come close to 28 minutes. This was the last we'd see of Bravo Company, the newest class of Marine Corps officers in training at the basic school. Proficiency is acquired. Oh, that makes sense. Day. The platoon commander oh, that bro. must have a working That is not it, bro. That ain't it. Of all weapons it needs to be like that. The infantry battalion. Should be and straight on like this. Day or night. Yeah, marksmanship's important. Fire. <clears throat> Reload. Weapons on safe. I wonder if I'm going to recognize any of these marksmanship instructors. As the saying goes, every Marine is first and foremost a rifleman. At the basic school, two weeks are spent learning to handle and shoot firearms. Just to just to make sure it's clear, like one of the purposes, the main purpose of the basic school is to basically teach every single lieutenant that goes through the basic school how to be a provisional rifle platoon commander. That's the whole purpose. Because what that means is that if they need officers, you are expected to be able to lead people into combat regardless of what your MOS is. So that is something that I think they do a very good job of in the Marine Corps specifically um, because they prepare everybody for every contingency. So, yeah, just wanted to make sure everyone understood that. That's a big difference between the Marine Corps and every other branch. Alpha Company is in week eight of training. All the Marines are trained Alpha on the Company. M16 service rifle, which has been around for quite a bit was. of time. But it's uh, the standard weapon system that every Marine uh, utilizes when they get out to the officer. Gibson major Marcus Gibson interesting so I'm currently checking all the bores to make sure that there's no instruction around the uh, around the rifling yeah that could cause an instruction and further on maybe sergeant Chris Palencia Contact! nice before they fire they dry rounds. fire the Marines practice moving. Slow it down. Look to your left. Look to your right. And shooting without ammunition. So go ahead. Lock your butt to the rear. Once I say click, go ahead and conduct the speed reload. All right. Click. Is what they're doing today something that the Marines in the basic school look forward to? It is definitely something that they look forward to. This is the first time with hands-on a weapon system, putting rounds down range um, and practicing those skills. Contact! You guys are good. You guys are comfortable with the dry runs? Yeah. All right, go ahead. PMI. Go to at the red animal table. <clears throat> hey, two more. Almost a third of the way there. Yeah. Hey, grab those. Uh, oh, table. My hat. Not my hat. They carry a Not standard the six cover. magazines on them. The number of rounds that they'll be shooting. I'd probably put it somewhere around probably close to 100, maybe 150 rounds. How is success sort of measured? So this particular course of fire that they're firing is called Table uh, 5, I believe. Unless they're doing the ARQ, which that would be different. But typically with Table 5, you have two targets like this. So that's probably what this is. Um, and you have 
two targets that look like that and you do different various drills with those two targets from um, three different distances. Uh, so for table five, it's like combat style shooting. So obviously you're wearing full kit for the whole thing, which I think you wear full kit for um, all of the qualifications now. Um, but specifically for table five, you're doing like very close. You're doing like close to the enemy drills. Like everything is you know, within 5, 10, 15, 20 meters, right? Because most engagements are going to be relatively close anyway. So that's kind of like what these are for. And they're practicing various drills um, using both targets. Uh, so that's kind of what they're doing here. This isn't like table five is not where people get their shooting badges from. They get their shooting badges from table. Well, they don't do table... I think they still, maybe they do. They were planning on keeping table one and two in the pipeline schools, but they might be doing only ARQ now, which is just the annual rifle qualification uh, training, which is a little bit different than the uh, table, the tables course of fire. But um, yeah. Anyway, hopefully that explains what they're doing. So success is measured by specifically how they score, Major whether rounds Steven hit on the paper. Stevenson? Headshots are basically shots wait, 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 wait. area. So Major Steven Stevenson? Chest shots and face shots. Shots that are at the oblique could cause someone Stephenson. to stop moving, but wouldn't necessarily be lethal. Or Stephen Stephenson? Shots. Make sure your fluid... Don't Sorry, I got really distracted by that. <laughs> Just focus on the basics. Focus on the line one, three. two, three, four, okay? Okay. Every Marine now they're doing their first and pistol foremost, qualification as well. But they're also trained to fire pistols. Yes. Currently, they're all firing the M18s. M18s. Yeah. Six hour so M18s. Here we're looking at their target for pistol and pistol alone. Here in the center. All this counts as a 10 inside what we call is the bowling pin. The bowling yes. pin is all this area inside here, which is mostly what everyone wants to try to score to get the most maximum points. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now you can actually see it. This is all the 10 area. Yeah. After this, we do have... The trick is, is even if it lands a little bit outside, if the... If it cracks the line for that bowling pin, it counts as a 10. The 8. The 8 ring. And then you get a 6 ring. All shots in here counted as 8. And then so on and so forth. So here is 6. Yeah. After the 6 ring. Yeah. And then anything on the body is 4. Anything yep. outside, basically off the body here, is considered a miss. Yeah, they it's have a, to at least that's a boo boo. The body you don't want to do a boo boo in order to get some type of score. No, 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 boo boo. Two hundred sixty-four to three hundred twenty-three, you're considered a marksman. A three hundred twenty-four to three hundred sixty-three out of four hundred, you are a sharpshooter. And then for expert, is three sixty-four between four hundred. Most of these lieutenants look forward to basically trying to get expert because they they for some reason they worry more about their little pistol badge let's be up front uh everybody wants to be wearing expert badges nobody wants to wear a marksman or a sharpshooter um or a sharpshooter or marksman uh i don't think anybody's like wow I, you know what i really want a marksman badge that sounds really cool now obviously it doesn't matter you should just be you should like want to be a better shooter to be a better shooter it shouldn't really matter what the badge looks like like and i think that's what his point is is that he's trying to drive home is that you know it's more important to be good and like you know a good marksman than it is hey look at my shooting badge you know and the rifle badge Why is it essential for officers to have this kind of a skill? It helps a ton with your credibility and it's hard to lead people if you don't know what they've been through and you haven't experienced those things. So coming out here, getting in good sets and reps is going to help you better be able to lead and plan even though you may not be executing those things in the future. Well, why the Marines? You know, you could have chosen any other.
Before joining the Marines, Second Lieutenant House graduated from the University of Notre Dame, where he performed as the school's mascot, the Leprechaun. So, yeah, why no kidding. Well, sir, uh, just in the Marine fashion, they got there first. The first recruiter to contact me and talk to me. Good for him. Marine recruiter came in there, saw everything on the walls. I was a wrestler. They had a poster of some wrestlers up, and they told me it was going to be tough. We get a lot of wrestlers. We do. It was going to be easy or it was going to be a scholarship. They almost dissuaded me from doing it, and that just makes you want to go all the more, see how far you can go and push yourself. Mm. Good for you, man. Unlike every other U.S. military branch but the Space Force, the Marine Corps is succeeding in recruitment. It outperformed its goals in 2023. What attracts people to the Marine Corps? They're sold on all the things that our recruiters lay out for them, the travel and you know the camaraderie and the friendship. And if the nation calls, and it likely will, that they are trained. Let's be honest. The reason that the Marines uh, are winning at recruitment over everyone else is because of the ethos and because of the, you know, the way that people perceive the Marine Corps. They perceive them as being proficient. They perceive them as being reliable, dependable. They, they're, what they do is social media, especially as of late when you saw the you know, the Navy social media on Instagram, for example, posting that picture uh, of the guy firing the M4 with the, you know, VCOG on there backwards. And then the Marine Corps immediately the next day posted a picture that was very similar with the VCOG on the correct way and said clear sight picture like gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, there's just like, you know. There's a swagger to it. There's like, you know, just like the the history is rich, the the reputation, the reputation. That's definitely one of them. So, cuz you can get all the other stuff from all the other branches. Like that's fine, you know. You can get travel, you can get healthcare, you can get whoops. You can get healthcare, you can get travel, you can get BAH, you can get a uniform, you can get, you know, hey, I'm an active duty service member status, like all that stuff. But the Marine Corps is different. All right, you get some things from the Marine Corps you don't get from the other branches. So, things to think about. Properly to go out and do the nation's bidding. Officers compose about 12% of the Marine Corps. Yeah, that's and with not over much. Thousand newly enlisted Marines. The basic school is where officers learn to command them. The role of a Marine Corps officer is to lead his or her platoon to accomplish a mission, and they're underpin by three critical skills. A student's ability to do tactical planning, a student's ability to deliver a combat order, and then their ability to execute it. That's what kind of provides the framework. God, those okay. classrooms. Uh, carry on, carry on. Colonel Reginald McClam serves as the basic school's commanding officer. A combat veteran with deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, he graduated from the school in 1998. At the end of the day, you have the enormous, enormous responsibility to create an environment where they can thrive every day and you can take their, their freaking talents and turn it into the valley against their adversary. Mm. All Marine Corps officers are required to have a bachelor's degree. Upon yes. joining the fleet, is, a second is lieutenant's a fact. starting monthly salary is about 90% higher than an enlisted private's. And these new officers are charged with leading and giving orders to Marines who are older and more experienced. The enlisted Marines. And if you're prior enlisted, which means that you had enough time to qualify for the prior enlisted pay, then you get paid even more than the rest of the other second lieutenants when you're commissioned. It's like not crazy, but it's a little bit more. Marines, they do things, hard skill sets. Officers lead them and guide them and manage them in doing those things. There is definitely a manager and team leader aspect, but it's really about how do you create an environment for your subordinates to be successful. And when you do this well with your Marines, they will move mountains for you even when they know that you may be giving them an order that they may not come back. This is Fox Company.
At week 13, hmm. they're about halfway through their time in the basic school, and they're preparing for one of the most critical tests, land, land navigation. navigation. Now, let me tell you this real quick. Land navigation at the basic school is an emotional experience, and if any of you have ever been through the basic school and you remember what it was like when you were doing land navigation, you'll probably agree with me. And if you don't, well, you know, you should probably swallow some humble pie. It's okay. It's okay. I've done a lot of land navigation in a lot of different places that was very difficult, including the jungles of Okinawa. And this was, this was by far much more difficult and arduous. I will be 100% honest with you about that. And here's the thing, just another thing. Lieutenants get a real bad rap for being like, you know, lost lieutenant is a stereotype. I'll tell you right now, the lieutenants here that go through the basic school, the land navigation package they go through is more stout and more robust than any land navigation package you'll see anywhere else probably in the Marine Corps other than like maybe special operations. Like... um it's it's robust and it's for a reason. So students are conducting their final land nav. It's their final daytime grade event. The whole goal is to ensure that students can understand MGRS, the military grid reference system, can navigate between points. And we use the metric of finding these red boxes in the tree line. To do mm. so. They've got eight boxes to find. I I'm going to tell you the easiest time of year to do this is the fall when all the leaves are off the trees. I can't imagine doing this in the summertime when everything is like very lush and blooming because good luck finding some of those boxes when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you can't even see like three feet in front of your face because the tree line is so thick. Like even when the fall, when even when it was fall, like, you got to go the extra distance sometimes to find some of these boxes and you might just get lucky or you might not get lucky. It's pretty, it's bananas. Ideally, they have seven hours to do so and they've got a minimum of six to pass. The main resources they're yeah. using are their protractor, military topographic map, their compass, map pens. But other than that, they're doing land nav without the use of a GPS. So this is really testing their ability to operate without a global positioning system. Yeah. If students can't find the minimum number of six to pass, then all they'll do is they'll remediate at another time and we'll give them the basics of what they need to. So when he says that, like, you're gonna pass. Like, here's the thing. If you fail land nav, you're gonna repeat it over and over and over and over and over and over and over until you pass. Like, so don't worry. If you fail at once, you're going to do it on the weekend, right? That, that, and that sucks, right? But you're going to pass. You're going to pass eventually because you're just going to keep, as long as you don't cheat, that's the ticket. If you don't cheat and you stick with it, you're going to pass because you're going to keep doing it over and over until you get it. That's one thing that they are like extremely serious about. Succeed and then we can help coach them on to finding better attack points or maybe uh, shooting a better azimuth and other things that'll lead them to success later on. With the land nav test, there's more With at the land nav passing test. or failing. Their scores can impact the military occupational specialty or MOS yeah. assigned to each Marine. Yeah. Students at the basic school are graded on a variety of subjects and all this is compiled uh, to determine their score. Then the Marine Corps breaks up those students into thirds. If you fall within the top of your third, that is seen as more favorable, and there is a higher likelihood, not a guarantee, that you will get your first or second or third choice of MOS. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. It's an extremely complicated thing. Like, it's all perform, most of it's performance related, but there's also, um, there's just a lot of things that go into it, like a lot. So. In 2018, six students at the basic school were expelled from the Marine Corps after they were accused of cheating on the land nav test. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. 
That was a big deal. That's why I say don't cheat. Don't do not cheat whatever you do. If you don't cheat, you will eventually pass. Thank you. How many points did you get? Uh, we were supposed to get eight, and I got all eight. How did it feel when you got eight? Oh, you got all eight, huh? Nice. It felt, it felt pretty good. I sat down, had a peanut butter and jelly. I did not get all eight. I got uh, seven. I got seven out of eight. and But I finished, like, before a large majority of everybody else did. I just missed one. I don't know where it was. I can't remember. It was, like, on the north... Somewhere on the northeastern side of the map was a point that I got. I got a point that was a little too close, and it was like it was like over here. But I picked this one instead because I hit it first, and so I was like, okay. But I don't care. I still pass. It's like whatever. I'm done. I've done. Enough. I've done a ton of land nav anyway. After so, yeah, I've rewarded myself. Definitely, there was a lot of like pressure on this because it was the final one, um, and it's like eight points. Yeah, it's stressful, man. Before. But yeah, this like a weight lifted almost. Yeah, it's an emotional experience. Other tests like to lead up to this, and they were only like I said, six points. Yeah. Um, so this was the big one. Do you feel like you got your workout in for the day? Oh yeah. For sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> Definitely got a workout in today. You probably <laughs> ran like multiple miles that day. From the service academies, from colleges and universities, through their platoon leaders class, or from OCS. All are here because more than anything else, they want to be Marine officers. For Second Lieutenant Pigeon and the rest of Fox Company, their next test is the Which one was course. Pigeon? <laughs> That's a funny yeah, name. Oh. Pigeon. Here you go. <laughs> what are they warming up for? <laughs> This is for Business Insider. Begins with a oh, jump over a low the vault, double O course. Followed by overcoming a single bar using one of two techniques. Yeah. The college boy roll. That's the easiest way to do it. Chicken wing. Then college boy roll is the way bars, to do it. Which require both upper and lower body coordination. After keeping their balance on a horizontal log and hopping over another vault, the students jump and climb over a six foot wall. And after another series of vaults and navigating a double bar using the chicken wing method, it's time for the final test, a 20-foot rope climb. You have three attempts to do the rope and go and test the log. You can't get in three tries, you're done. Yeah. But that's just the beginning because you have to do this twice in a row. So, for time. The whole thing. You have to do the whole thing twice in a row. Nice. But that's not the end. No, it's not. All Marines have to complete the course twice. twice without a break. Without a break, yeah. It's a smoke fest. By the time you're done, you're like wheezing. You're wheezing like a like an emphysema patient. Three minutes, 47 seconds. No assist. I just got over pneumonia. Oh, bro. Yeah, it was a, I know that hurt your it lungs. It was a little rough, but hey, we got it over. We did it. We, did it. we killed it. Nice. Good job. Woo. Nice. Second Lieutenant Pigeon. Oh, that's to Pigeon. Until okay. The end for her turn. You're going to be fatigued, so you don't want to like rush up there and then lose your grip and slip, so just take your time. Go. I'd be curious to see what happens. Let's see. Can she do it? Can Lieutenant Pigeon make it? I bet she does. She looks fit. She looks like she's in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> he yells yeah like that. He sounded like he was on a horse. Like he was, yeah. One more for chest. Hell yeah. All right, let's do it. Two, three, two, halfway. Let's go. Pigeon's first attempt. Free was banana bread? One Hell yeah. Yeah, there you go. They made this very dramatic. I like this. This slow-mo. This slow-mo. Today we're following Pigeon. Oh, we're sorry. Lieutenant Pigeon. My goodness. You did well today. Lieutenant Pigeon.
Good job. How you doing? I'm good. Oh no, she's smoked right now. Pretty gassed, yeah. Gassed, I was gassed after that too. <laughs> that pretty easy. Oh, it was tough, sir. <laughs> yeah. But it was good. We all passed, so. Nice. It matters. It always feels better when the whole platoon passes together. Yeah, just like they're baby ones. Yeah, they're baby ones. <laughs> right there. That's from the rope. Uh, yeah. But it's. Yeah, I gotta work on my rope technique. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get that. At the end, I was like all, all arms, but it was figure good. four or it good. It feels the good bite. Be done. <laughs> gotta work on that bite. After a while, I began to feel a change in myself. I was stronger, more sure of myself, more professional in everything I did. I could sense a tremendous change <laughs> the in him. Old, <laughs> the old marine commercials are just so. He knew himself, what he could do. So funny. How much he could give. Oh, there were baby. nights when he had to study. He'd lock himself up in the room and tell us all to stay away. And there were nights when he was gone, out on a field exercise or a tactical problem. What's crazy to me is that this is that that. So the only people that really like. I would say that the large majority of people that were students at the basic school, if they had kids, it was because they were prior enlisted dudes that had kids when they were enlisted. Like most of those, most of those lieutenants did not have kids. Most of them were not married. There were some who were married. And I mean, heck, we had like three or four people that were married in my platoon that were brand new lieutenants, but they didn't have kids. Um, the only two people with kids in my platoon were two of the other prior enlisted guys. And it was like, I think there was three of us in that platoon. But back then, I would imagine that there was probably a sizable amount because people had kids much sooner in life, you know? I missed him. In a way, I, I missed him too. Him. He was really a part of something great. Yeah. This is music. God. It's like this Vietnam era music. This film was made in 1973. 73? Well, before the first I was right. Vietnam era. Class graduated from the basic school. Today, about 9% of active duty Marines are female. And about 10% of Marine Corps officers are female. Oh, more, there's more females that are officers than females that are enlisted. Just a few weeks further into training. By percentages. Entirely different by percentages. The Not by numbers. Trying to take a picture of me real quick. <laughs> I look good with all this came and paint on, and I'm in my hole, my fighting hole. I want to send it back to my girlfriend. These officers are dug in in defensive fighting positions for a simulated combat exercise known as offense defense. Offense defense or fex three, as it uh, used to be called. E tools, uh, e tools. It's it's a small shovel. So with a, baby a, shovel, a serrated edge. Uh, of dig holes with it and uh, through some of the throw dirt on my uh, I know some my, my rack mate. Got less lucky with roots, so. The, the the depth will vary based off of the the ground you have. Yeah, hopefully you have Not hooligan tools in the basics or uh, are new to the pioneer Marine tools as well. Some of the newly commissioned officers pioneer gear. are prior enlisted. How long have you been in the Marines? I've been in the Marine Corps about twelve years and three months. Oh. In Morristown, Tennessee, I was either become a factory worker or get in an affairs thing. So okay. I'm glad I chose this approach. So what do you hope to accomplish now that you're about to enter this sort of next phase? Of yeah, you're going to fat old dip into, boy. In some, some form of capacity. So that's my goal at, at this point. Uh, I do have a wife and three kids, so yeah. uh, I am on a, a time crunch that I've given myself. Uh, but I'd love to, to be a captain, uh, be over some Marines, and, and just try to make the Marine Corps a better place. Still ranked, you have well, that's MCO. good, man. I hope you, I hope you can do it. That's the goal. Make the Marine Corps a better place. Shots out. Still rain. Do you have that MTA? Hey, he said around 500 meters. Roger, copied 500. Over. Is offense defense fun? I think it is. Why? Uh, because right now we're doing everything we learned in the classroom. So we've spent the last two or three weeks basically running through different scenarios and what we would do. So now we're actually out here and actually doing the thing. Hey, engineer team, yeah. send that grid again. Over. Are you either of the targets, the one on the PB or? So There's for their, the first two days, that's probably, I was just a rifleman, and then I switched to platoon commander. To so say. really, from that rifleman position, I got to observe like 
all the little friction points. So you got a little yeah. more of that enlisted perspective. Five, three, five, three, five actual shots out. I say again, shots out. Yeah, so uh, when you're out in these field exercises, you're switching from one billet to the next. Uh, sometimes you're doing you're getting evaluated. Some people are like, Hey, you're going to be, you're going to be a squad leader and you're going to write a squad order for this. And you're going to brief it on a terrain model, doing a rehearsal, a concept. Um, and you're going to teach, you know, you're going to, you're going to like, no joke, be in charge of running a mission of some kind, or you're like, Hey, you're going to be the platoon commander and this is your platoon and you're going to kick a platoon order and you're going to do a platoon rehearsal of concept on a terrain model. And then you're going to go out and you're going to execute, right? And there's certain things you have to do. And sometimes it's during the daytime. Sometimes it's at nighttime. Um, this right here, offense, defense, it sounds to me, because what it used to be is you would have uh, FEX 2, you would do offense and defense. And then FEX 3 was mostly defense, and people were like sending patrols out and stuff like that. But this kind of looks a little bit more like the areas we were in during FEX 3. I might be wrong. I can't remember. But um, yeah, you do switch billets a lot. Sometimes you'll be just a plain, you know, general population dude. Sometimes you'll be the radio man. Sometimes you'll be the platoon commander. Sometimes you'll be a squad leader. Sometimes you'll be the platoon sergeant. Sometimes you'll be, you know, whatever, like whatever billet is needed, you know, and you switch it up. The Marines of Echo Company spent the rest of the night in relative peace. Yeah, I'm sure that but was the short next morning. They're preparing for an attack. When was the last time you heard the movement? Over. Roger. Copy all. Five actual out. Uh, if it was anything, he said no more than a four man team. Okay. So, more than likely, they put out a small LPOP, like a listening post observation post, um, because they probably wanted to just like have somebody and they're probably sending patrols out too, like pr like patrols out to just like, you know, check the area out and like see, because that's how they, that's how the platoon commander updates the enemy situation, right? If he sends patrols out, he can get an idea like, okay, if they were here, that means there was no enemy, right? Or if like they went through here and they didn't, they didn't see anyone or hear anyone or, or encounter anyone. Okay. That means this area is clear. Let's keep having them push around. And that's how they continue to update their map. They keep updating their enemy situation and they can kind of tra battle track from their little CP by sending these patrols out or having like little listening posts set out that can observe the terrain. These Marines are aided by a foreign ally. Oh, nice. A soldier in Greece's Hellenic Army and Special Forces, training with them in the no basic kidding. school. That's cool. I always wanted to experience training with U.S. Marines. I always admire their operations. I was reading about them. So I always wanted to do this. I had the opportunity and I came here. Rousakis is playing the role of a platoon sergeant. That's cool. He's charged with relaying orders from the command post to the Marines playing the roles of enlisted riflemen on the front line. I like that balaclava. <laughs> they made this seem so much more epic. I remember being out there and just like by to observe the action. I'm like, oh man. Contact. Yeah, I'll be the first to tell you if you can fire blanks through a 240 without it jamming, you're doing something right because that's extremely hard to do. Yeah. You are receiving no fire. Cease fire. They had to. The gun worked. That was sweet. Everyone. Uh, did his job great. We were ready. We were very silent. And when they come, we already knew that we were coming. So we attacked them with heavy fires. And yeah. uh, yes, we win. It was a good time. It was like <laughs> good job. It was, it was a good nice. time. 
Are you feeling the, uh, the adrenaline? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, was, it was more wait. excitement. Like, we were waiting for it. We were getting cold. Yeah. It was, it was time. Then as soon as I saw people start sending rounds down range, I just started sending them. Yeah, you get out. Badass lipping, brother. Kind of some type of way. Like, Heck yeah. That was me every single day out there, too. In this scenario, right? Yeah. You think that that's valuable? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. It's extremely valuable. The reason why is because you actually get to see what they go through, how it is digging that hole, what they have to deal with, the human factors associated with, being cold, being on stand too, all of that stuff all embodied in one package. It really gives you a clear 2020 vision on what they deal with on a day to day. And uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, officers do the plan, but, you know, the enlisted is the ones who actually get the job done. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest and say it. So, I have nothing but respect for him. You got a fat dip in. You got a fat Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's my first one. You, know, you got a I, I fat told dip in, bro. dips all the time. And I tell him, hey, I'll take one off you. Just one during the defense if we win. <laughs> That's awesome. Echo company. This was their first taste of war. That was a decisive victory. For the you, era, he era. had a fat dip in. For Delta Company, nearing the end of their training, it all comes down to the basic school's crucible, known as the war. Yep, so this is the, the war. last exercise that they'll do, where they'll do a company on company exercise. First Lieutenant Palumbo. Students, 150 students, basically building up all the basic skills that they've learned here at the school. Recommend landing east to west. Great. We took a bunch of casualties due to a immediate suppression mission. So we've come back here to conduct a medevac with a UH-60 Blackhawk. Oh yeah, they do some uh, actual the students need to understand how to do a medevac evacuation. Regardless of what MOS they get, they will possibly have to do this at a range in garrison where they need to work with higher echelons of care. To get That's good training out. right there. Real good training. It's legit. We had the Blackhawk for when we did war as well. What are you reading? Uh, right now I'm reading the book of Luke. Anything you, you go to Luke specifically for something? That you're uh, looking for? No, that's just the name of my son. Oh, so yeah. Sometimes I like to to just read Brandon that Shaw. Um, hmm. Before coming to TBS, I went to Rome with my wife for a vacation. And so they have all the paintings of all the saints. And so uh, I just thought it was cool. And then I hear that like his scripture is supposed to be like the most poetic and beautiful of all the scriptures. So I'm just kind of growing in my faith, getting into the Bible. So I figured I would just look into it while I was waiting. Hey, check, check it. This one's got the roof as well. For Delta Company's Bravo Group, the objective is to seize this city from the enemy. But Mount. First, they must attack from a wooden area yep. across the road. A two is going to be a. That's a Mount right there. The Mount Town. Squad. Support is going to be adjacent to them. That's hundred killer. Okay. That place gets right, so right. gassed right. out. Go, yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah. That's the S that's the uh, TTPs. That's the tactical procedures for what they learn for the teacher. Amid the chaos, the Marines must distinguish between the enemy and friendlies to avoid firing on their own teammates. Are there friendlies in A1? Don't need to shoot if you don't see them. When I started sending people over here, at first they had good uh, obscuration yeah. and smoke. But you see, there's like, there's away, like those little murder holes everywhere. From the hotel, yeah. Which caused, uh, I think, about half a dozen casualties in the street. Simulated casualties. Yeah. Bang! Bang! We got him out of that. Right, turn again. We got him. I've been shot! <laughs> That's a good. It's a good acting job. All right, going down. Get her a letter. Get her a letter of achievement. She did a good job. Like it was almost too dramatic. I wanted to make it as realistic as possible, being a casualty, because I knew the more realistic I was, it would just reflect for a realistic training. And so I That's wanted good. to make sure that my That's good. were getting the. It's tough. It's tough to want to do that. Care that they needed to a casualty. It's tough to want to do that in the moment because you're like, uh, what do I? You, you want me to like pretend like I've been shot? You know. Line six secure. Line seven air panel. 
Line eight, all U.S. military. He's calling in a nine line Kazavak right now. Ooh, look at that. The next morning, Medium. after a successful attack, Bravo Group is now playing against an enemy counterattack that could begin at any moment. How was it sleeping? Oh, there's a counterattack. Cold. Nice. We were pulling security, so we were up. Like oh, it got so cold out there. Uh, and you're in concrete. For enemy in the tree line, it sucks the heat I right out of the buildings. Sleeping in the sleeping bags. Like, it's, it's pretty warm, I'd say. Two of our buddies, they had to go up on the roof last night and it started raining on them and they were up there the whole time, so they got pretty cold and wet. So are you guys having fun? Yeah. Really they had to go up on the roof guys. last night. What's your MOS? I'm going to be a ground supply officer, so I wouldn't really be doing anything like this specifically. Jay um, Moringham. It's nice just having Moyering, just like the to do it one last time before I graduate here at TBS. Yeah. Do you think that there is a value to this mindset of an officer shouldn't ask a, a Marine to do anything that they aren't able to do themselves? Absolutely. You shouldn't even sit down, let alone eat, let alone uh, smoke a cigarette if that's what you do. You shouldn't do those things until you've ensured that uh, your Marines have had that opportunity to do that themselves. Okay, if I see more than four, I'm shooting. Okay. What side of the road was that? Who's yelling? You hear that? Yeah. Black Widow. This place gets bananas. Because like, oh yeah, they come through the tree line. How many? Go. How many? Hey Jeff, you might need to get a gun over here. Oh my God. Go, go, go. Yes. I'll tell you right now, like that M240 firing blanks inside of a concrete like area, like that building will blow your eardrums out faster than anything. And I was running through there when we went through and I was hip firing it inside of the building at people because they were coming up the stairs. And I was like, oh, okay, I can't have that. And then I was like running around the whole entire building, went upstairs with it. It was like running from window to window, firing some bursts at each window. Man, that was a good, that was a fun time. That was probably the best part of all of TBS. Despite its lot of fire, some of the enemy force makes it into the city. Yeah, it's hard not. I'll be at brief. He's getting yeah, mad. Yeah. Hey, did the squad that just went out of that building to that side get killed? Hey, we got friendlies in Bravo 2. There you go. When you have to communicate the defense. Ceasefire green. The instructors cease call fire. for a ceasefire. Green. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so they must be doing war. It's probably us uh, just telling the other team how badly we beat them, sir. They must end war so there. Good. Yes, sir. Hey, good job, boys. Good job. Woo. That's cool. I like that. So when we when I went through, we we uh, we did mount first, and that was like the first thing, and then we rolled into war after that which felt more like you're doing just another layer of PB ops. So that was like, you're like, oh, bro, why, why couldn't we have finished on that high point? Because Mount was the most fun we had the entire course. So if you do like the field out in the woods, tree line stuff, and then you do the military operations in urban terrain at the end and end there, it's like you're ending on a high note and that's like the coolest thing ever. So it looks like that's how they did it here. Oh, Eating donuts? Eating donuts, bro? Yes, yeah, I'm feeling better. Uh, oh, man. Feels good to win the Got war. to eat some, <laughs> some sweets, really job, some donuts. It was, it was good training. Yes, sir. We won. <laughs> Done. There you go. Fun time. Got the guns up. Living my dream. That's good. You're going to intermingle with, with the group over there and everything. Be humble and be respectful. Because Captain they Jared Cavanaugh. work. And they put in a lot of good hours out here. Had some good actions just as you have as well. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, what's our motto? Succeed or die. Succeed or die. Succeed or die. Succeed or die. Okay. For this new class of second lieutenants, that motto will be put to the test after graduating from the basic school and joining the fleet. Yeah. A 
lot of them will be put on marine expeditionary units, and those are four deployed units on ships floating around different areas in the world, waiting for a crisis yeah, to happen ship. so that they can respond. Marine expeditionary units are the people that were that responded like immediately uh, when stuff started getting really weird over off the coast of Israel. Like, you know, you had the Gerald Ford carrier strike group and I believe one other carrier strike group go there. And the Mew, there was a Mew that was out there as well, the 26th, I think, at the time. And they responded to that thing as quick as well. Like there's always muse that are deployed all over the world and they're like a like a quick reaction force to be able to just, you know, operate in an expeditionary manner across the planet at a moment's notice. The basic school never closes. No, While it one class graduates, another continues through the course. They know why they're here. To become one of the few good men who will lead. Dude. When I got to the basic school, I was right where I wanted to be. The Marine officers I'd met had always impressed me by their professionalism, by the self-confidence they expressed, their pride in the Corps. To me, it was a challenge. Who's that? I don't know which one that is. Can't tell. Dang. That's freaking wild, man. That's wild. Oh, wait, wait. Marines are different. That's wild. Man, that's crazy. I, I mean, I haven't thought about that stuff in a while. I think I graduated the basic school in, or the basic officer course in April of 2022. So, and I'm sure that they change it from course to course sometimes because the, uh, the commanding officer for the basic school was different back then. It's a different individual. Um, and like each commanding officer can kind of make their own like changes if they want to change some things about it. Um, but that was crazy to rewatch all that stuff. I brought back a lot of memories. It was, there were some miserable times. I'll tell you right now, there were some like big, sad times, but there's also some good times too. And you met a lot, I met a lot of friends there, uh, met a lot of really cool people as well. And I hope that everyone that was there is doing well today. I do genuinely. So anyway, I hope you uh, I hope that my comments and stuff like that helped kind of provide some perspective on like certain things that they were talking about and like things that they were going through uh, because it's only like they only have so much time to like fit all this stuff in together into a video. So um, hopefully that's of benefit to somebody. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you want to see any of my other videos, you can, you know, go check out my channel. You're welcome to peruse, peruse I guess, through that stuff. But uh, anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.